Good morning and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we're going to have a special video. I'm going to take you on the Talamina Scenic Byway which begins in Mena, Arkansas and ends in Tallahena, Oklahoma. Actually it begins in Tallahena, Oklahoma but for me it begins in Arkansas. So there. So sit back and enjoy the beautiful scenery now. This byway is probably one has some of the most spectacular views in the state and we're only going to do the Arkansas portion which is 14 miles and probably an additional 10 miles into Oklahoma before I head north and come back home but there are plenty of stops along the way there are a lot of old historic uh, sites if you took the time to explore a lot of old homesteaders uh, went, there's a lot of old homesteads up there a lot of things to see. I, this will be about my fifth time up there, so try to show you some cool things. Here we go. Next time clip you'll see, it will be in the park. All right, we are now making our way into the Palomina Scenic Byway. We are in the Washita National Forest. So sit back and enjoy the trip. The Talamina Scenic Byway goes from Mena, Arkansas to Tallahena, Oklahoma. On June 7, 1970, Lucy Baines Johnson Nugent, Lyndon B. Johnson's daughter, dedicated the highway as the only Oklahoma highway built specifically for scenic driving. The road followed and connected two truck routes constructed and maintained by the Civ Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. The roadway was designated as a National Forest Scenic Byway on February 8, 1989, and it was later made an Arkansas Scenic Byway on January 7, 1998, and an Oklahoma State Scenic Byway on October 10, 2002. The National Scenic Byway status was conferred on September 22, 2005. All right, we are at our first roadside pull-off, whatever you call them. And you know, I always hear people, they'll be in a downtown in a city and they look out of an apartment window and say, oh, look at that view. Well, that's not a view to me. That is not a view. That is man-made structures. If you want a view, feast your eyes on this. We're only two miles into the park. About 8 o'clock in the morning, it's a little hazy. Every time I come up here, it's hazy. But it's still beautiful nonetheless. Just to give you an idea how far up we are. It only gets better as the further we go. So let's make it to the next pullover point. I'm just going to show you the main ones today. I'm sure I'll come back. We'll do a bigger and better video. Alright, 
we are at the round vista waypoint this faces the west still spectacular views only we don't have the sun in the camera now there was a couple more uh i passed because there was people there but i'm here on a weekday generally you don't see a lot of people especially early in the morning and it only gets better so we're going to move on to the next one all right got you guys riding on the hood of my truck don't fall off you're expensive Now we are at the Eagleton Vista, which faces the east, southeast. Look at the views. It is just a peaceful place to be. Just make sure you fill up on gas, uh, especially if you're doing the entire 47 miles. We're going to only do probably 30. The stops will be brief. It is a sight to see guys yep and like well I was gonna say there's not a lot of traffic and two cars go by but considering other state parks it's not bad at all I imagine if you came here on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday or any time on the weekend, you're going to run into more people. But I believe I've been here on the weekend as well. And uh, see if I can get you up there. It just is never that bad. All right, let's move on to the next one. It gets better as it goes. like this one just about a minute down the road check it out guys 
far as the eye could see. Just breathe it in. Yeah, we're a little late for the most of the wildflowers. That's okay. You can see a lake right out that way. I can still hear logging trucks hitting their jake brakes. You can see places that were logged. All the brown spots. I guess if you want homes, it has to happen, right? And there is uh, millions of acres here. Well, I don't know about millions, yeah. Well, there's a lot. Look at that old pine tree. That's pretty cool looking. You could spend a whole day in this place and not see everything. All right, we got a lot more to see. I only got so many batteries, so let's go. the microphones on for this clip and what I'm talking about is it's really sad that in our country we can't go to beautiful places without people putting graffiti on everything this place was covered the road was covered the cliff on the other side was covered cannot can we not teach our children better than this and this isn't isn't just here it's everywhere you go, historical sites, somebody has to spray paint nonsense all over it. And we got to put a stop to this. I mean, this, this is terrible. You know, it kind of takes away from the beautiful views that you're looking at right now. It just made me angry, and there's just trash everywhere. There shouldn't be. And it's the younger generation. There's no guys my age climbing that cliff to, pay, uh, to spray paint. So we need to do a better job and keep our parks nice because we're ruining this earth. And it's terrible.
all right guys i forgot to put my microphones on on that last stop so i'm sure i did a voiceover on, on it uh we are at a picnic area that also has the fire tower pretty cool huh obviously we can't go up it it's all fenced off and they mean business because it's got razor wire like 15 foot high fence i have to say they have let this place go they need to replace these you can't read that graffiti all over the last stop it was horrible just horrible we'll walk up here a little bit a few things to see yeah every, it's a shame any kind of park or historic site is usually covered in graffiti just got to do better teaching these kids man because we're not doing a good job of it let's take a look at that dude that is pretty cool i sure wish we could go up there and i might add the roads have gotten quite bad so it's very good that i have a truck because there was a pretty big pothole coming up here and there's a sign that tells you when they built this and when it was closed let's go see they got some restrooms here nope nothing there nothing there i believe it was that sign when we first came in but sure can't read it but you don't get to see these in a lot of places anymore I know it's pretty old, but it's not in use anymore. But like I said, there's just, you don't run into a lot of people. Good place to film a video. Let's go see if this sign says anything. Man, if they don't give you a sign, how do you know stuff? That's what I'm saying. Be a nice place to come have a picnic. That says blah, 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 nothing. All right, let me go see if I can make out when this dude was built. I mean, the sign's there. All I gotta do is replace this plastic. 1923, I believe. Rich Mountain Tower on the lookout. But unfortunately, I can't make that out. All I can see is 1923. I will research it and I will let you know. The last time I was here was probably 10 years ago that I stopped at this place. And it did not look like that. So let's move on to the next place. You can tell this wall's been here a while. That's hand forged, whatever that is gate latch gate hook but there's no graffiti guess that's no fun to them to paint on yeah that's a very old wall it's just peaceful out here man that's why i like living in a place that is not heavily populated all right let's get in big dog and roll out. Man, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the tower, we have Lake Wilhelmina Vista. Oh, where's the lake? You can see some fires burning down there. I don't see no lake. But we got graffiti. Yeah, they do need to do some maintenance to this place, but still beautiful. All right. There's one down the road I know is just crazy. We're going to go there now. I still got you guys going on time lapse. I see a little lake there, but ain't much of one. Nonetheless, beautiful view.
right, and we are in Queen Wilhelmina State Park, and they have a nice lodge here if you're interested in coming and staying at the lodge. I don't know what it costs, probably more than I could afford. And they have a restaurant. And look at the view, guys. You want to stay here? Got a nice view. They even have a railroad. They have a train that you can take tours on. It goes throughout the park. I'm not quite sure how far it goes. Uh, if you Google it, sure you would find out. This is Wilhelmina State Park Lodge. Excuse the guy mowing behind me. So if you get lonely for people, you could come stay here. I'm sure they got all kinds of fun things to do. Pretty nice place. Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina, Queen Wilhelmina, whoever she is. I don't know, never heard of her. All right, on to the next stop. All right, we have entered the Oklahoma side of the park. Uh, as you can see, still spectacular views. Get y'all adjusted here. And this will probably be one of the last stops on the video, if there are any more. Before I hit the road back home, I will definitely stop. You can just see for miles and miles and miles. Got to get a drone, guys. But I really don't have much call for one unless I'm doing trips like this. And there's an old tire. Uh, people. I could just imagine leveling that out and having a cabin right there in 1890. That would be awesome. Nobody would ever come up here and bother you. It would be great. All right. I think this is one of the last stops on the Oklahoma side. Well, before I have to turn on my highway. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know by giving me a like. Uh, get, leave me a comment. And if you feel in, you know, inclined to subscribe, that's up to you. I'd appreciate it if you would. Let's get one last look at this before I pull out of here. guys a little bonus footage this is the vista that i did not stop at before because there was some there was a young couple in here doing kissy kissies Ooh, ain't nobody want to see that this is acorn vista this one is nice i'm glad i stopped still hazy 
this one goes quite a way. Here's a little sign here. Uh, and of course, graffiti. Uh -huh. Acorn. Below lies Acorn, a pioneer settlement known in the early days as Gord Neck. This name was derived from the shape of the valley. To the left, the narrow valley of the upper Washita River forms what some pioneers saw as the handle of the gourd as it curves between Fouche and Rich Mountains. The Kansas City Southern Railway and U.S. Highway 59270 pass through this handle. To the right, Wolf Pinnacle, Iron Fork, and Rich Mountains surround the farmlands of Mena Valley, the body of the gourd. There's a little map. And let's walk down here. Nice little shaded trail. Even in the heat of summer, I could see you could get shade in here. Let's go over to this side. There's just not a lot of people here on the weekdays. I dig it. Let's hope not, I left my keys in my truck. Hope you guys enjoyed this drive with me. I need to do something like this more often. Relieve stress. You know, all them puppies. Yeah, they would love to come. Right, let's see what we got around here. I am not familiar with this tree. If any of you guys know, let me know. Here's what the leaves look like. I kind of got it at the tip of my tongue, but it's a different kind of tree that I've used to seeing around here. All right, here we go. A few years back, I got some great shots of eagles flying right up in there. I have to see if I can find them, but I doubt it. There's a cell tower. Can't get away from them. And there's some evidence. Spray paint cans, trash. Uh, don't get me started. All right, guys. And you even got a nice view. And I'm probably five miles from the entrance of where I came in. Uh, maybe next time we will pick up where I left off on the Oklahoma side and do a part two. Don't know when that'll be. Well, let's go take a look at the, up here. Well, we did film that, so. All right, guys. Happy trails again.